Da -da 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 Show World. Welcome to Show World Gamers. Josh here, and as this week draws to a close, I wanted to take a moment to look at this week's biggest news stories, some of this week's gaming announcements, and this week's new video game releases. But if this is your first time on the channel, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the fun. All right, gamers, let's kick off this week in review with a few new stories. Now, in a super cool story about Super Mario 64, the modding community has once again come through with the creation of a long-desired project. Mario Builder 64 is a ROM hack that allows you to build 3D Mario 64 levels that you can upload for other players to play. You do need a ROM of Super Mario 64, as this is just a mod, but it's super impressive. More info can be found as well as the download at the website romhacking.com. Also in a story from Reset Era, a job listing for Sony was spotted that is being speculated as proof that they are working on a standalone portable system. Unlike the recently released PlayStation Portal, which streams games directly from your PlayStation 5, this new handheld would be a standalone console that would reportedly play PlayStation 4 level games. Now Nintendo acquired a new company this week. They purchased 100% of Miami-based Shiver Entertainment. This is the company that did the ports for Mortal Kombat 1 and Hogwarts Legacy to the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo purchased the company from Embracer Group. Nintendo did state that it aims to secure high-level resources for porting and developing software titles, so it appears, at least for now, that Shiver will continue business as usual. Alright gamers, next up let's take a look at a few gaming announcements. Now the long-anticipated EA College Football 25 received a reveal trailer this week. This will be the first college football game EA has released in over a decade. The game is coming to the PlayStation 5 as well as Xbox Series systems and will support crossplay when it releases on July 19th with multiple versions, including a deluxe version with three days of early access starting on July 16th. Now, V Rising received a release date trailer this week with the game coming to the PlayStation 5 and PC on June 11th. The game looks pretty fun with a three-quarter top-down open world, kind of sandbox style with fast gameplay. In this survival action adventure game, you awaken as a vampire, hunt for blood in nearby settlements to regain your strength, evade the scorching sun to survive. And you raise your castle as you strive to conquer the land of the living. I'm pretty excited for this game. It kind of reminds me of the original Blood Omen Legacy of Cain game, and I love that game. Now, there was a showcase that took place this week called Tiny Build Connect 2024, where we got some PC game announcements, including this free-to-play online arena battle game where you have over-the-top fast-action food fights. The game is called Ramen, that's R-A-W-M-E-N, and it's releasing for PC on July 23rd, and, well, this game just looks like a lot of fun, so hopefully we hear about a console version of the game really soon. We also received a trailer for a game called Kingmakers. The game is a third-person action game that takes place in the 1400 AD and has you fighting in medieval battles. The catch is, your character has much more modern weaponry at your disposal, like dirt bikes, guns, and even a tank. The game looks promising and it's coming to PC, but no word on a console release at this time. Alright gamers, let's finish up with this week's new video game releases. And the big release this week for Nintendo fans is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. It released this week exclusively on the Nintendo Switch. This is a remake of the GameCube game that many refer to as the best game in the series. The game is an epic paper adventure filled with comedy, familiar characters from the Super Mario Bros. universe, and RPG gameplay. And we did pick this game up. I'm playing it. I absolutely love the game so far. Definitely pick this up if you're interested. Now, Hellblade 2 Senua Saga released this week on the Xbox Series systems, PC, and is a day one release on Game Pass. 
The atmospheric action-adventure game is a brutal journey of survival through the myth and torment of Viking Iceland, and I highly suggest using a headset when playing the game, as the audio is a big part of this game, and it really adds to the immersion. I did a full playthrough of this game here on the channel, so I will put that link at the end of this video, so definitely check that out, and if you're thinking about playing the game, I highly recommend it. I had a ton of fun playing it. Now, World of U2 released on the Nintendo Switch and PC this week. In the game, you must use living liquid creatures to build bridges, grow towers, terraform terrain, and fuel flying machines. Each level in this puzzle game is beautiful, dangerous, and ever-evolving. Also, the Nintendo Switch version does include an exclusive local co-op mode. Now, the System Shock remake finally came to consoles this week, releasing on the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox One, and Xbox Series systems. Joining the previously released PC version, the game is a remake of the classic first-person action-adventure game from 1994. You take on the role of a hacker exploring and trying to survive the Citadel Station and a rogue AI. Now, X Defiant also released this week on the PlayStation 5, the PC, and on Xbox Series systems. The game is a free-to-play first-person shooter game from Ubisoft. The combat is arena-based, 6 versus 6 online matches. The game is launching with 14 maps inspired by Ubisoft franchises like Far Cry as well as Splinter Cell, just to name a few. Alright gamers, that concludes this week in review for the week ending on May 24th. The week started with reports that Microsoft is going to add the new Call of Duty game to Game Pass when it releases later this year, contrary to previous reports that it would not. Then we started getting more rumors that Sony may be planning a new standalone portable console. And the week ended with us jumping back into a GameCube classic and Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. But let me know anything we may have missed in the comments. And thanks for joining us today, gamers. Choge World, out.